We knew what the film was, we knew what our intention was, and we got towards the tail end and didn't know what to call it. Uh, we, we had probably 500 titles that we, you know, we'd wake up in the middle of the night, write something down, look at it the next morning, and be like, that's trash. In the end, it was... It was uh, very infuriating. I'm going to fail if I try to assume what two teenage girls are going to talk about on a road trip. So we, we really were striving to set up scenarios so that they could just be themselves and have those conversations. We didn't want it to be too pretty. Uh, we, we wanted it to feel, you know, I mean, there's some of the, some of the footage is it's the kid's cell phone. So it's, it's, we wanted, you know, the audience to feel like they were along for the ride as well. And if you make it too pretty, it's, uh, you know, I, I think in this circumstance, it's, it would be a distancing thing if you, if you were to do that. Hi, hi, welcome to Cinema Express. I'm super happy to be talking to the Ross brothers today. How are you two? <laughs> doing well, doing well. Just uh, getting our day started over here. Oh, okay. It's pretty late in the night here. It's, I mean, not very late, but it's around 8.45 in the night here. So, right. Um, okay. I watched Gasoline Rainbow and uh, I really uh, could relate to a lot of things. But first, I wanted to ask you, uh, what was your idea behind the film's title? Gasoline Rainbow. Hmm. Behind the title? Yeah. Well, we went through a very long process. It was a little ridiculous. We knew what the film was. We knew what our intention was. And we got towards the tail end and didn't know what to call it. Uh, we, we had probably 500 titles that we... You know, we'd wake up in the middle of the night, write something down, look at it the next morning, and be like, that's trash. In the end, it was... It was uh, very infuriating. It was fatigue and mishearing each other's ideas, and we and gasoline rainbow popped up, and it's... I don't know if that's a term that translates, and it, not even... It's not even in everybody's uh, uh, usage here, but it, it's like the, you know, the, the rainbow on gasoline. It's like uh, finding poetry in unlikely places or, or finding beauty in ugly things or, uh, you know, hope in toxic situations. Uh, yeah. Right. I, I think the, the title finding process was way more strenuous than the actual filming process for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you said it seemed infuriating, but I mean, yeah, uh, I kind of got a very, very, uh, very, you know, teenage vibe from the title. I think uh, it, it kind of summarized the, the teenage outlook. Um, the cinematography, uh, I felt it was a, it was very real. Uh, it didn't seem very cinematic, and that way I could relate to it a little more. So, what was your aim behind keeping it so simple and uh, you know realistic? Uh, just being, just being there, just just the feeling of um, you know following something in motion. Um, we didn't want it to be too pretty. Uh, we, we wanted it to feel, you know, I mean, there's some of the, some of the footage is it's the kid's cell phone. So it's, it's, we wanted, you know, the audience to feel like they were along for the ride as well. And if you make it too pretty, it's, uh, you know, I, I think in this circumstance, it's, it would be a distancing thing if you, if you were to do that. So it was more about giving a very like close personal uh, experience for the audience, is it? Yes. Right. Yes. Right. And is that the same with the dialogues as well? Because I felt like there's this conversation between the two girls. They're talking about piercings and everything. And I felt that was just the conversation I would be having with my best friend when I'm going on a long drive with her, you know, and there's uh -huh. nothing like there's literally nothing on top of my head. So I'm just like thinking out loud, you know. So was right. that also the, the idea behind the, the dialogues, like to keep it really up close and personal? Absolutely. And all the dialogue is is from the person speaking it. Um, we we had nothing written down uh, as far as dialogue goes. It, it was very structured as far as the ideas of what we were doing each day. But we wanted to set up scenarios so that we would get moments like that. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm going to fail if I try to assume 
what two teenage girls are going to talk about on a road trip. So we we really were striving to set up scenarios so that they could just be themselves and have those conversations. It's the whole ethos of the filmmaking. It's the same reason it looks the way that it does. You know, we create these things, we produce them, uh, but but really we're just creating opportunities, you know, for, for things to emanate, whether they're the images or the dialogue or the moments and just trying to be present for that. Right, because this is very interesting. Uh, I mean, in, in most films, the script, everything is written verbatim and the dialogues are oriented by the actors. So it's very interesting to give the actor the freedom to, you know, come up with what they would say in such a situation. And yeah, somewhere it reiterates the whole realistic, uh, you know, outlook towards the film. Um, coming to the teenagers themselves, like there are the five main te teenagers in the film, right? So uh, how did you how did you pick them for the role? What, what drew you towards them for this uh, particular film? They had a really... Um... They each had their own unique charisma. And then they also, um, uh, together as a unit, had had a, a, a really interesting energy. And there was no duplicity in the group. Each one is its own individual. But the alchemy of them together uh, seemed to be a moving force. And we went through many, many iterations of this in casting, because casting is also part of the writing process. We hadn't always imagined five leads, but the two girls and the three boys were already, you know, thick as thieves. They already had their their own uh, energy to them. And when we put them together, they clicked. And we knew that that was the thing that was going to move through. So the five of them didn't know each other before, right? I'm guessing. Nope. Movie magic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because they seemed like really, really close friends, high school friends who are just like going out on a you know, trip or whatever, on a road trip. So, I mean, that really worked out, the, the camaraderie between the five, uh, you know, teenagers. Um, so, Gasly Rainbow plays on that classic uh, road trip uh, film trope, right? So, you know, what are your thoughts on the genre? Because sometimes there are these very trope, very cliche elements uh, in such films, like, you know, if there's a road trip and they are trying to embark on a journey, they try to get something out of it. And then there's like a message at the end. So that's how these road trip films usually work out. So what? How, how did you aim to make your film somehow different, somehow unique, and like not bore the audience with the trope? So, so what was your thinking behind that? It was less about making a road trip movie. And it was more about using a journey as a vehicle for the kids to process their emotions and be present in this contemporary America. We're much more fascinated by sort of the mythology of migration, especially the American experience of always heading, you know, the heading west, the always searching for the frontier, whatever that may be. And, you know, certainly we grew up on all the same movies and books that everybody's consumed that have all these tropes and sort of expected outcomes. But we've already seen all those things, so we don't need to make them again. And we wanted to have something different and uh, and use that format um, as a means to draw out and also to play with something that's very familiar to us. You know, we have been those kids. I think we still are in many ways and travel like that. And uh, it's it's been it's been a place of epiphanies for us. And our hypothesis was if we if we traveled with this generation in that way that, you know, we might, they might have a similar experience. Right. right. Um, somewhere I read in an interview that, uh, you know, the scene where the kids actually lose wheels to their vehicle, that, that actually happened, I guess, or something like that, something on those lines. So what were some of the logistical challenges, uh, like, you know, while filming a road trip film, because you're on the move constantly and you have to film them inside the car and I don't know if the the wheel thing actually happens. So could you share some some you know anecdotes from shoot it, uh, shooting the film? Sure. I it, we wanted to keep you know the kids safe. We promised them that and their their parents that. So you know while some things on screen look you know dangerous or um troublesome you know the, the tires thing we set up they didn't know that it was going to happen but we set that up um and and that's the case for 
about everything that they they encountered. We tried to give them, <laughs> we tried to surprise them continuously. So I, I mean, the the whole thing, the whole production was a very risky thing that is full of all these variables, and it's an insane way to make a movie. But we had to structure it so that at least we had a chance to pull it off. So each of these beats that we knew we needed, we had to preconceive. But the the characters within the film were receiving that information in real time. So they were genuinely having those experiences, although we may have known in advance. <laughs> yeah, we took we told them that like they would always be safe, but there would be surprises along the way. Trust us, we said, and then sometimes we broke their trust. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. I mean, this is this is a very, very uh, unconventional way to shoot a film, I guess, because when you're not even telling your cast what's going to happen to them next, this, it's like it's like you're put into a mystery room or something like that and you have, you have to find uh -huh. your way out. Uh, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. did you every time you tried to surprise them, you tried to give them a twist, did you actually get an output that you wanted to get out of it? Yeah, because yeah. we want an honest uh, response to the situation you know that that's why we work this way is not to have a preconceived notion of what it should be predetermine what they say how they feel what they do but to give them an opportunity to express themselves and respond to it in their own unique way okay right and uh, do you think the audience have uh, received your film well uh, because i've been reading mixed reviews across the site across the web so I've just I just wanted to know like do you think they've actually first of all have they seen it in the right way and then have they received it in the right way? Well, it takes all kinds, you know. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, but to our face, yeah. <laughs> we we, <laughs> we made positive. the we made the movie that we wanted to make, and there is a there is definitely a contingent out there who are deeply receiving it, and there are some people who never get into what we do, and that's okay too. There's plenty of movies out there for them. Right. Right. Thank you so much for this conversation. It was really nice talking to the both of you. Thank you so much. Of and course, all the very best. Thank, thank you. <laughs>